The monastery of Lesa Dubaliu stands in the place of Akkarei, close to the river Lesa, and a short distance away from the ancient Roman road that crossed that river and connected Porto with Braga. A small cenobium dedicated to our Lord the Saviour of the world already existed here in the 10th century, possibly destined to house the members of its patronal family. Its patrons were Trutzendu Osuredes and his wife Unisco Mendes, members of an important and old local nobility family. A document from the year 1003 refers a donation that the couple made to the friars of the basilica that existed here. In 1021, Unisco Mendes and her son Osuredu donated this monastery to Tudlilu, abbot of the Mozarabic monastery of Vacarissa near Coimbra, marking a period of growth in Lesser's prestige. It was in the early 12th century that Theresa, Countess of Portugal, donated this monastery to the military religious order of Malta, more commonly known as Knights Hospitaller, that established their first Portuguese headquarters here. In 1140, King Afonso Rix expanded the donation through an official charter endowing the jurisdiction of a larger territory to the monastery. A new monastery, in Romanesque style, was then built. The temple we can now see was the result of the enlargements and reconstructions in Gothic style done in the first quarter of the 14th century by order of the Hospitaller Baliu friar Stevon Vasch Pimentel. In the main façade, the portal is in pointed arch and has four archivolts decorated with geometric and phytomorphic motifs supported by columns with capitals carved with phytomorphic elements. Above the portal, there's a cornice set upon a group of modillions that supports a parapet with battlements. Further above, we can see the large rose window that extensively illuminates the church's interior. The volumes of the nave, apse and transept are staggered. The lateral naves have flat roofs and the central one, that is taller, and the transept have gable roofs. The bell tower, that has a height of 92 feet, has box machiculations in the top angles and at half height in the western, southern and eastern faces. Its four sides also have arrow slits visibly suggesting its defensive functions. In the lateral façade, facing south, there's a portal with four archivolts, with the innermost one being decorated with phytomorphic motifs. The columns have capitals with zoomorphic and phytomorphic decoration. The portal is framed by a simple gable, topped by the cross of the Sovereign Military Hospitaller Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes and of Malta, full name of the Knights Hospitaller. Founded in the 11th century in Jerusalem, following the rule of St. Augustine and with the objective of accommodating and helping pilgrims, this order also performed military duties from 1136 onwards. Their mission was to protect the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and the Monstrance, establishing their first fortress in the town of Bait Jibin. At that time, the order was already established in Portugal. After the Lesser Monastery, they also received lands in the Tagus riverbank, where they built the Belvir Castle, and later the town of Krat, where they founded a notable house that would name their leaders from the reign of Afonso IV onwards, Priors of Krat. The church's lateral facades have mullioned windows with three centered arch frames that illuminate the naves. On each arm of the transept there is a large pointed arch mullioned window. On the western side we can see the tripartite apse of the temple, punctuated by voluminous buttresses of Romanesque aspect, between which appear tall mullioned pointed arch windows. According to descriptions prior to 1844, the year when most of the monastic premises were demolished, the building expanded towards the south, where a cloister existed. The 
the small portal opened in the northern side, in the transept's arm, led into the old sacristy, meanwhile dismantled, still presenting the vestiges of the start of a wall. Its configuration as a church fortress, that like other contemporary temples, reveals the instability of the first centuries of Portuguese independency, constitutes a compromise between functionality and religiosity. Therefore, that is not surprising, since this is a monastery belonging to a military and religious order, a balance materialized between the defensive tower, that could very well be the keep in a castle, and the large Gothic-style church. Inside, the church has a lowered pavement, accessible through steps. It is divided into three naves, with the central one being taller and wider. The walls are in granite stonework. The naves, divided into five bays, are covered with beams made of oak and chestnut wood, being separated by pointed arches, supported by cruciform pillars with clustered columns. The pillars that support the church's arcades are broadly decorated with phytomorphic elements, more typical of the Gothic style, but also with several figurative carvings. This tradition, that comes from the Romanesque style, expresses the importance of art as a narrative and even formative medium for the believers inside the religious space, combining religious episodes with others of popular character. In these remarkable capitals we can find depictions of events such as the temptation of Adam and Eve and the expulsion from paradise, next to the portrayals of fantastic creatures that illustrate concepts such as sin and redemption. There are also sculptures of episodes from the life of Jesus Christ, such as the Adoration of the Magi, the Flagellation of Christ and the Crucifixion. The history of this monastery is marked by various important visitors, such as King Afonso I of Portugal, who stood here for some time and heard impressive accounts of the Crusades. It was in this church that King Ferdinand I married Lunor Telch in 1372, in a ceremony marked by the dramatic refusal of the infant Denis, son of Peter I of Portugal and Inés de Castro, to kiss the hand of Lunor Telch. In response, Ferdinand I raised his dagger, intending to murder his brother, being restrained by the intervention of two noblemen. Later, Nunuavers Pereira rested here during a pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela. The church has two apse chapels that flank the chancel, with the one on the epistle side being preceded by a slender pointed arch, supported by columns with decorated capitals. Its interior has a polygonal five-sided floor plan, demarcated by the ribs of the vaulted ceiling, being illuminated through three narrow windows opened on the right side and on the center. The left wall of the chancel is almost completely occupied by the tomb of Friar Cristóvão de Cernach, commander of Lesser, who died in 1569. 
built in the 16th century in Renaissance style, it has an arcosolium organized in pilasters and entablature. Under the arch there's a bas-relief depicting the family crest of the Cernaches and Pintre. Over the funerary chest there's a sculpture of the entombed in polychrome terracotta, wearing the habit of the Hospitaller Friars and being depicted in a kneeling position in front of a praying kneeler. On the wall, on the right side of the chancel, there are two arcosolia that contain the tombs of Friar Lope Pereira de Lima and of Friar Diogo Mel Pereira, who were brothers. The chancel is preceded by an ogival triumphal arch with decorated capitals being topped by an oculus. It is covered by a ribbed vault converging into a central boss decorated with a flower. The apse chapel on the gospel side is dedicated to Our Lady of the Rosary and is preceded by a pointed arch. It is commonly known as the Iron Chapel, a name that may be due to the metal gate that once protected its entrance. It is covered by a ribbed vault very similar to the one that appears in the chancel, but on a smaller scale. Three narrow windows allow the entrance of light into its interior. On the left wall of this chapel, there's an arcosolium that houses the tomb of Friar João Coelho, carved in Ancien limestone in 1515 by the remarkable sculptor Diogo Pires de Yanga. In the upper section appears the recumbent statue of the entombed, depicted as an elderly bearded man wearing a tunic with the cross of the Order of Malta in his chest. His head rests upon a pillow, and his hands are joined as a sign of prayer. Below the statue appears the signature of the sculptor. On the funerary chest appears a sculpted angel holding a cartouche bearing a funerary inscription, being flanked by the coat of arms of the Coelho family. On the right wall of the same chapel, there's a bronze plaque comprising two sheets and containing a laudatory inscription in Latin with embossed characters separated by rosettes with four petals. It was created in the 14th century to cover the ashes of Friar Stevon Vasch Pimentel, founder of the present monastery, who is buried in a plain grave in the floor of this apse chapel, fulfilling his wish. In the upper margin there are depictions of angels flanking the Holy Trinity and the Annunciation. In the sides appear six apostles and, in the lower margin, the Portuguese heraldic shield and the Hospitaller cross. In the nave on the Gospel side, placed against the northern wall, we can find the tomb of Garcia Martins, who was a prior of the Knights Hospitaller, Grand Commander of the Five Iberian Kingdoms and Commander of Lesson. It was carved in granite in the first half of the 14th century in a very simple layout. This funerary chest that is supported by three lions was placed in different locations inside this church. The lid has a funerary inscription carved in limestone where the year of Garcia Martin's death appears, January 1306, as well as the posts he held during his life. In the facade's wall, a large, radiant rose window illuminates the church's interior. Its morphology is similar to that of the rose windows of the Santa Clara Church in Villa do Conde and of the San Francisco Church in Porto. On the Gospel side, to the left of the church's entrance, there's a formidable baptismal font. It was carved in 1514 in Ancien limestone by the sculptor Diogo Pires the Younger. 
In its upper section appears the angel holding the family crest of Fray Juan a figure that is quite like the one that appears in his tomb, created by the very same artist. The basin has an octagonal shape, featuring a profuse and very refined decoration, where phytomorphic motifs such as flowers and artichokes are depicted. There are also bands with inscriptions carved in Gothic characters, where the name of Friar Juanquelu, who commissioned the work, and his title as leader of the Knights Hospitaller, Prior of Kratu, appear. In the base there are sculptures of six fantastic creatures, possibly dragons, that represent the forces of evil, subordinated by the angel and the artichokes, symbols of regeneration, that appear in the upper part of the font. One of this monastery's most important functions, deeply linked with the foundational vocation of the Knights Hospitaller, was the assistance to the pilgrims on their journey to Santiago de Compostela. The river Lesser was crossed nearby in the Pont la Pedra, stone bridge, whose construction dated back to the 2nd century AD as part of the Roman road that linked Porto Scale, Porto, and Bracara Augusta, Braga. Thus, from the 10th century onwards, this monastery became a stopping point for pilgrims, including kings and noblemen, but above all, thousands of common people that travelled the hard and dangerous path to Compostela. With the extinction of the religious orders in Portugal in 1834, this monastery was abandoned and sold in public auction, falling into disrepair. In the 1930s, it was extensively restored. The Monastery of Lesser do Baliu is classified as a national monument since 1910, being one of the most outstanding examples of Gothic architecture in Portugal. Thank you for discovering Portugal with us. If you liked the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to follow our new releases.